The government last year claimed that a lot of the issues are due to refuse, dumping, uh, litter, sewage, and all these other stuff. Yeah. We have seen signs of that in the last couple of months. We know it's a lot of refuse, and I don't want to go into that chapter, but we know what we're talking about. Yes. If that is pre preceding this flooding and this rainy season, then morning shows the day, and there will be issues. Now, the question is, what is the government doing? Okay. Now, the government on its own part, as from, I saw some designs with some certain engineers along the Victoria Island and Lake areas, mm. they've increased, they are trying to increase, and they are increasing the channels, the drainage channels. Before, some of the drainage channels are 1.8 to 2.5 meters wide. But now the government is enlarging it to 3.2 to 4.8. Mm. With this, they are creating meanders in these drainage channels. A meander is when you create a zigzag moment in the drainage that reduces the force of the water when coming. So the government is trying to enlarge most canals. If you go to Ekpone, they increase the, mm -hmm. the, the size of the canal in Ekpone. In so many places like that, this is one major factor which the government must take into place because the drainage channels are, mm -hmm. the, are, the, are the transportation of this water from wheresoever it's coming mm -hmm. from. Two, the government is trying to clear houses and buildings, shanties and kiosks around the drainage Mm. Pathways. The drainage pathways is 11 meter to the drainage. You measure 11 meters, so you don't build 11 meters to the drainage. Because when you build closer to the drainage, your refuse, your waste, mm. most times goes into the drainage. Most times. Talking about refuse, we, we, there have been, and if you've been following the news, there have been a lot of sightings of refuse yeah. um, with the independent contractors versus the, the state contractors and all, and there's just been this, this chaos. But I mean, you are opening these drainages, you are increasing the width. Is it just giving room for more drainage to clog it up, or <laughs> should there be a system of actually taking care of this waste? Um, anybody who is in government now didn't wake up to a population boom. Yes. They know the population, exactly. they know the numbers, and they know what needs to be done. And the question now is, is the government doing enough actively to ensure that this rainy season will not be worse than, than last year? And that, I, that's where I think the crunch of the question is. What, 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 if you, what do you, if, have to if you ask me, I think that on paper the government has a plan and the government seems to be doing enough on paper, if you ask me. And I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I'm just be, being plain honest. I, mm. I know of areas, I work with quite a number of youths in some areas where if it rains, they are not going to get out of their own houses. And some of these people, the, the consequence they have had to suffer is not as a result of their own actions. They have just had to cope with the government's inaction. For example, whose responsibility is it to construct proper roads? Mm. The state government is doing palliative measures that it announced on Twitter and some other social media channels that it was going to do, for example, in Ikorodu. And those palliative measures actually started. There are no drainage channels on the same road where the government is putting palliative measures. So when the rain starts falling and there's no channel for the water, who suffers the consequence of that? Mm. And who is to blame for that? Engineer. But yeah. then the palliative measures are being done by the government. There are some designs. When we do some road designs, we don't place drainage in some designs. Why is that? The reason is, when we do uh, designs in roads that are closer to the water basin, which is the Ogunoshu water basin, Ikorodu Road is, is a road that is closer to the Ogunoshu water basin. I'm not basin. talking about Ikorodu Road. I'm talking about Ikorodu. Even Ikorodu itself is in alignment to the Ogunoshun water base. I mean, guys, let's, let's, I mean, there's a lot of technicality and big words being thrown around, but I'm, I'm in the home of that man or woman or family that saved so much to get that home or is paying rent. And they are literally living in that house six months in a year because half of the year is going to be filled and flooded. I mean, I had instances of people last year who literally had to move because the house was submerged. Now, how, how, how does a family like that reconciliate or reconcile with, with all that, that hardship? And I think, I mean, let's be honest with, with ourselves. There's a role for the government to play. There's a role for the people to play. But we know that the people respond to the structures in place. You, for example, can't go outside this country to some countries and just throw dirt yeah. or behave anyhow because there is a structure in place. And that is what I'm trying to address with both of you as to the fact that a lot of blaming keeps happening. But who should take the bulk of the blame? I think we must admit, just as you said, the government has its role, the people have their roles. But when you compare the role of the people versus that of the government, you realize that the government has more than 70% of the role to play. 
compared to that of the people. And I'll give you one instance. I used to live in an area where the river overflows mm. at a given time. And when the river overflows, this, is, this has nothing to do with the activities of the people. The river simply overflows. And for several years, Let's the people... Let's attribute that to global warming. The people no. were... It, it, no, it, it's, a, no, it's no. in direct connection to... There's a particular time of the year when they open the dam. Yes. Mm. And once the dam is open, all the people in that area are in trouble. If you drive out with your car in the morning, you can't get back into your neighborhood. If your car is at home in the, mo in, in the afternoon, you can't get out with your own car. And we had to get onto a canoe mm. to cross into your own neighborhood. And for years, people were writing to the government until sometimes in 2010, when the government woke up and finally fixed that road, did a bridge. Who fixed it? And it was done under the administration of uh, Governor Babatunde Rajifashala. Mm. Now, when government did what it was supposed to do, the problem was permanently fixed. And that reminds us of the fact that if the government swings into action in as many areas as mm. possible, you realize that the role of the people is just minor and the people will comply. So, yes, the people have to do this, don't build on drainage channels, and don't throw death in the, in the drainage channels just because it's raining, because you don't expect the rain to carry everything mm. away. That's it. But a bulk of the responsibility lies with the government, and the government needs to take care of, give us good roads. Mm. Do you, I mean, have you ever been in a situation where you want to drive and it starts raining and you're scared? You're not scared because of your car. You're even, scared because I'm, of the road. I'm even sometimes scared. When even it's not raining, I just need the traffic ahead. <laughs> but on the final note, let's just let's just round this up. Um, what what measures do you think people can take in the light of what is going on, either the government or the people, with the flood coming up? One, the the, the people have to make sure they give information to the government. Okay. Because information is what we need when it comes to problems like this. Information like everybody have to be a whistleblower. When you see people building along the drainage path, mm. you inform the government that certain person is building along the drainage path. And this. then two, the people themselves have to be the government of themselves. Mm. They have to make sure they are not allowing thank, neighbors or anybody thank, to... Thank you very much, uh, Engineer. Sorry to cut you short. Fola, thank you very much for being here. Uh, still rubbing minds, and of course, uh, we do have a final lap. We have two lovely ladies in the house. We'll be talking about lies and celebrities, the fake life, right after this. Just me, let's dance now, it is my turn.